The experimental vessels were constructed out of a fine grain commercial clay and approximately 20% sand temper and 20% fine sawdust temper were wedged into the clay blocks. Once temper types were incorporated into the clay body, coils were hand rolled to two different thicknesses, with care being taken to keep consistent circumference. The vessel bases were hand pressed to two uniform thicknesses, and construction began on the 36 test vessels. Only 17 more to go. All test vessels dried successfully with no cracking and once bone dry were bisque fired in one batch in an electric kiln. Rather surprisingly none of the vessels exploded, cracked or warped. Thirteen minutes. Ninety-eight degrees. Now, looks like
like we've actually got boiling at this point. So starting temperature of 26 degrees. Starting now. At 18 minutes we're holding 99 degrees. Alright. That's boiling really vigorously. This scatter plot indicates that, contrary to findings by Schieffer and Skybo 1987 and Skybo et al. 1989, mineral temper is performing poorly at heating water compared to organic and no temper vessels. An ANOVA demonstrates that thickness and temper have significant effects and are independent of one another. However, shape does not appear to have significant effects on heating efficacy. A box and whiskers plot demonstrates that sand was consistently the worst performer, while thicker vessels were less successful than thin walled ones at heating water. Shape shows no consistency of effect and does not appear to be a factor in heating efficacy under these conditions. An ANOVA of vessel weights indicates that temper, shape and thickness all have significant effects on weight. As such, I will not use it as a predictor of heating as it violates independence and is not relevant to the goals of this experiment. Temper is linked to heating, density and permeability. However, density does not play a role in heating and permeability has less of an effect than temper. Permeability is affected by both thickness and temper, but only temper affects the total amount a vessel can absorb. Sand demonstrates the highest permeability and maximum absorption while sawdust has the lowest permeability and the highest heating efficiency. Skibo et al. 1989 and Schieffer and Skibo 1997 found thermal shock to be mitigated by temper use, thinner walls and shape. During my water boiling tests, I made note of which vessels cracked during heating. I found no correlation between thick or thin vessel walls and thermal shock, nor was temper type significant, with sand only slightly less likely to crack. However, a very strong correlation is demonstrated between vessel shape and instances of cracking, with the narrow bottom vessels much more likely to suffer than wide vessels.